as you grow older in the life, you recognize that it is God who brought you here, it's God who keeps you here. Amidst the hustle and bustle of our society, there is a culture that has been preserved for centuries. This is a culture of contemplation. For many, the life of a monk is an unknown mystery. They live a cloistered life, separated from the world. Why did they choose a life of solitude and simplicity? Today, we go within the walls of the monastery to explore the lives of Trappist monks. The day is broken down into sections of four, four hours of prayer, four hours of quiet time reading, and then four hours of work. What drew them to the monastic life? Father Baron was a Catholic priest for 20 years when he visited the monastery. It was a big, big change. And I said, you think I'm nuts? What do you think this call is all about? His sister listened to his concerns before he spoke with the monks. And one of them could tell that I was interested and he said, I can tell you have more than a mild interest in this life, but don't push it. If it's real, you'll come back. The sense that I wanted this place kind of cooked for 14 years. As his draw to monastic life grew, he left everything to become a monk. Put all my ducks in a row up in Newark and then moved here in July of 94. People who knew me were not surprised. They sensed in me what I guess I couldn't see in myself. A, an attraction towards solitude and the stability of one place. Brother Callistus once lived in New York with a fast-paced job. I worked in the, in the computer industry in Manhattan, New York. While I was working, I, I read a lot. So I was searching for a deeper meaning in life. Through his searching, he felt the call to the contemplative life, and he too left everything to pursue it. All of us are called to the contemplative life. So when you hear the word contemplative life, I mean, it's, it's no big mystery. It simply means that your life has this underlying desire for being closer to God. A Trappist monk's day is very structured. They even take time for complete silence from 8 p.m. till mass the next morning. Traditionally, in the old Trappist days, there was no speaking at all. But the reason behind the silence was to enhance as much as possible an ongoing relationship with God without the, the clutter, you know, of language. Trappist monks look at their vocation as praying for the world. Each day, they gather seven times to pray and sing in the divine office which refers to the place where Trappist monks worship. The divine office, it's kind of humbling. It's a unified prayer taking place at once. It's praying the prayer or the life, if you will, of the church. Trappist monks take part in Lectio Divina, which is their personal time of prayer and study. When you take the, the sacred word, the words of Christ, for example, and you basically sit with it and chew on it. It's not academic study, but it's basically a spiritual experience where you take the words of God and focusing into the depths of those words, you encounter God. Even though much of their time is spent in prayer, work is also an important aspect of a monk's day. Some monks manicure and maintain the bonsai. Others make stained glass. Then some bake delicious treats in the Holy Spirit Bakery. We have baking of the biscotti going in full force. And they've done already three or four batches and they have another four batches before the day is done because the demand for that biscotti is very big. Mixing, smoothing, baking, packing and delivering all for the monastery's well-known biscotti. Today, 35 monks call the Monastery of the Holy Spirit home. 
and when their journey on earth comes to an end, they are laid to rest in the monastery's burial ground. Like a seed planted in the ground uh, to be you know, buried in the most natural way possible. No box, just like wrapped in a shroud, planted into the ground. They came from different backgrounds, but they all followed a calling, unimagined by most. Each of us call it this life. It's a radical life. It's a radical expression of our faith. Each one of us will tell you that we've fallen in love with God. After a while, you know, this is what you're meant to do. This is what you're meant to be. 